Now, when you parallel, and in parallel installations, let's say we have 1,200 amperes. Scott? So, <clears throat> I was just going to say, before we start 122F, before we get, which, which you have to turn your hat backwards, right? Now you have, okay. <laughs> well, wow, wow. Right. Okay, yes, sir. So, the, the general rule we've used a lot applies. Read what it says. Read slowly. We get a lot of, lot of questions about F. It's, I'll say it's pretty clear since we get questions, maybe it could always be clear, but read what it says, read slowly. It says what it says, maybe not what you hoped it did or actually thought it did. So just, it's there, read slowly. It's pretty basic, but there are some nuances. So just, just before we get started, it's not something to, that somebody should just race through and get it, because we even had a comment from a streamer that said, well, someone please explain 250-122F. And my reaction is kind of like, um, read it first. And then we'll see what anyone thinks. Very interesting. This is, we're all very sense. Those of us that are aware of this, we're kind of sensitive to this because if you make the mistake here, this can be a big mistake. A very expensive one. A very expensive. Very expensive. Yes. Mistake. Big time. So all you have to big do is time. read it and you better understand this because if you go fast and you think you know what it's saying, then you're going to have a problem. All right, ready for this? All right, I'm going to watch Jacob, see if you understand it. Jacob, what it says in 250.122 is that you size the equipment grounding conductors in accordance with the table of 250.122. That the rule says use a table based upon the rating of the overcurrent device. So in this case here, we have 1,200 amps. Brian is going to show me a table 250.122. He's going to show me 1,200 amperes, and a 1,200 amp would require... Oh. Oops. Sorry about that. It's hard to see that. It's going to require three odd. I move it up a little bit. We're doing bigger numbers. Yeah, we are going to get some big ones now. So, there we go. so 1,200 amperes, it's going to be three odd. He'll, he'll highlight 1200, it. 1,200, three odd. But here's the problem you need a three odd. But, Mike, I'm paralleling that in three raceways. That's good. That's wonderful. No problem there. But the equipment grounding conductor is three odd. And then it's three odd. And it's three odd. But Mike, what if I ran all these wires in a trench? Well, then you put one, one wire, because it doesn't matter how many circuits in it, one wire. And what size wire is that? Three odd. But Mike, if I run three pipes, what size wire? Three odd. Could you size the equipment grounding conductor based upon the rating of the overcurrent device, which means then you put them in each of those raceways. And that's where people make a mistake. They're thinking, okay, well, I need a three odd, and they love chapter nine, table eight. And they go to chapter 9, table 8, <laughs> and they take the circuit bill of 3 out of chapter 9, table 8, and it comes out to be 3 out. Yeah. That's going to be, and you will three get it wrong. Make it oh, you're going to get the exact answer. You calculated, I got this one, and then you're like, wait a second, how did I get that wrong? So now, Jacob, you're thinking, if it says size the equipment grounding conductor based upon the table, how complicated is that? It's really not that complicated. No, it's it? not. But but as soon as you pick up your calculator, okay, now you're screwing up. <laughs> right. You better know that because well, I'll tell you, I, I'm just kind of getting the feeling as we're doing all this, going back to what I said earlier about me accidentally naming the file calculations. Pretty sure when I'm sizing <laughs> anywhere in this section, bonding and grounding, at a table, I should not be using my calculator. Nope. That's how I'm Don't feeling mean. about this. Well, well, you know, you got twelve percent part, rule. Got twelve part. percent rule. Right. So. Again, F, that, that's the reason I said what I said. It's, it's there. Just read it, but be very careful because you can get in a lot of if trouble. If I'm reaching for my calculator, I should double check what I'm doing. You don't need a calculator for 122. Jacob, did you want to say something? Oh, he just answered it. Yeah. Okay, you don't need a Okay, All right, so now that is if you have raceways, okay? Now, if you have cables, the same rules apply to cables as apply to raceways. <clears throat> and that means that, and we already described... You have cable. The manufacturers, when they have a cable, they're installing the conductor, the equipment grounding conductor, and the cable, assuming you're not paralleling it. Right. Let me repeat that. Yep. The equipment grounding conductor in a cable is sized based upon that cable installed on a circuit based upon an overcurrent device that would be designed for that cable, not assuming you're paralleling it in two raceways or three raceways or four. They don't know. So if you're going to go parallel cables, then you've got to be really, really careful to ensure that you've special ordered the cable. 
And let's just take a look at the example right here. If I'm paralleling two raceways, and you have a 400 amp protection device, we go to 250.122 for 400 amperes, and 400 amperes would give us a three gauge wire on that table. Jacob, do you see that? Well, then I'd come back over here. I need a three gauge wire, but I need a three gauge wire in each one. But a 400 ampere fuse protecting two cables means, means these cables were rated for 200 amps, and that would have been three aught wire in there, and that would have been on a 200 amp breaker, and the size of the equipment grounding conductor for a 200 amp breaker would have been six gauge. So the actual equipment grounding conductor inside the cable is six gauge, if you see the, what Brian is showing up there. But because it's a 400 amp parallel, you need to have a three gauge in every single one. So you do the installation, the inspector comes out, and he says, hey, you have the wrong size equipment grounding conductors cables. They need to be full size. But I don't understand, Mike, what, wait a minute, why it has to be full size? Well, number one, we don't have to worry about why, because that's what the code says. But the theory is that you could have that, sec that, that, that feeder conductor fall inside the raceway to any one of those conductors in the raceway, and we're trying to clear a protection device so we have to make sure that equipment grounding conductor, uh, which doesn't have to be larger than the phase conductor, make sure that ability to clear that fault. Scott? Yeah, I was just going to say, you can order custom cable. It's yes. available. They'll make you anything you want. You can't get it next day. So you, you need right. to order. You can or cannot get it? You cannot. cannot get okay, it I was going to say. Um, if you are in a cable tray, um, you can place... You can use standard MC cables in the cable tray and then run a single conductor that's large enough in the tray with those cables to connect them all together. So if you're in cable tray, you sort of, I don't want to say it's an out, if you will, but there is a, a way to do it. And that is uh, C, one to, uh, F, two, C. So, Jacob. So that's probably a little more than... No, it, I think it's... But, I think but, it's, but it is... To, again, the only reason I'm bringing it up is it's most people won't run into that. That's a very industrial kind of application. But it gets back to read the rules. Some will help you. Some won't. But read the rules. What, what Jacob Scott is saying is that cable tray. Remember that ladder thing we showed? Okay, that's a cable tray. And, and what's nice about that is you could put... Use that as a support. It's a support system. You put these cables in the cable tray... And then you can run these conductors all over the place. And that's going to be, because cable trays are limited in where they can be used in some capacities, particularly for single conductors. And then they're saying, well, you know, if they put in a cable tray, there is a specific condition saying you can use those cables that have the equipment grounding conductor not properly sized. In other words, it's sized for non-parallel. But then you'd size the equipment grounding conductor that would be proper size, and you put that now in the cable tray. But then you take on the one end, let's say you parallel three cables, well, you have three equipment grounding conductors on one end, right? Three equipment grounding conductors on the other end. You run one full-size equipment grounding conductor, and then you connect the four conductors at both ends together Neutral. to result into an effective ground fault current path. But that's in a cable tray, limited to industrial. It's like an industrial application. You know, these people needed that kind of release. So that's a unique scenario, but it's, but it's there. we got to move on, Joel. Quick thing is important. Uh, in Eric's job, since you love 3 aught, if you run a 2,000 amp feeder, he's going to run 10 sets of 3 aughts in parallel. But as per table 250.122, your equipment grounding conductor has to be a 250. So there are some cases when the equipment grounding conductor in each raceway will have to be larger than the phase conductors. And because I want to submit a public input. Says, I thought we did. Apparently, either we did and we did, it got rejected or we forgot no, to do it. Because it has <clears> to be the total of the phase conductors of the parallel set. Yeah, there's not nothing in there in the parallel is saying it does not have to be larger than. 